بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ان الحمد للہ نحمد و نستعین و نستغفر و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیئات آمالنا من یحده اللہ فلا مدل له و من یدل فلا هادی له و اشہد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریف له و اشہد ان محمد عبده رسول اما با رب شرخ لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل لقتا من لسانی یفقہ قولی ربی زدنی علم آمین In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most magnificent, all praise is due to Allah, Lord of the universe. We praise Him and we seek His help and His forgiveness and we seek His protection from that curse Satan. Whomever Allah guides will never be misguided and whomever He allows to be misguided will never be guided. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah who is one alone and has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and messenger. May the blessings of Allah be upon him, his family, his companions, and the righteous who follow them until the day of judgment. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear sisters and brothers. Today I'm actually going to be doing a short talk on about, a uh, short talk on the last sermon of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this sermon was actually delivered on the ninth day of Dhul Hijjah um, on the valley of Mount Arafat in Mecca. And Mashallah Tabarak, it's one of my favorite sermons, and I really just wanted to kind of go over it with you guys. Uh, I'm going to read it first, I'm going to read the sermon, then I'm going to kind of discuss it, some of the points to give you guys a deeper um, meaning to it, Inshallah Ta'ala. And of course, everything that I'm reading and discussing and going over is according to the ulama, not my opinion. So really important to get that. All right, so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. After praising and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O people, lend me an attentive ear, for I know not whether this, whether after this year I shall ever be amongst you again. Therefore, listen to what I'm saying to you very carefully, and take these words to those who could not be present here today. O people, just as you regard this month, this day, this city as sacred, so regard, so regard the life and property of every Muslim as a sacred trust. Return the goods entrusted to you to their rightful owners. Hurt no one so that no one may hurt you. Remember that you will indeed meet your Lord and that, will he, and that he will indeed reckon your deeds. Allah has forbidden you to take usury interest. Therefore, all interest obligations shall henceforth be waived. Your capital, however, is yours to keep. You will neither inflict nor suffer any inequity. Allah has judged that there shall be no interest and that all interest to, due to Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, who was the Prophet Sallallahu uncle, shall henceforth be waived. Beware of Satan or the safety of your religion. He has lost all hope that he'll ever be able to lead your astray in big things. So beware following him in the small things. O oh people, it is true that you have certain rights with regard to your woman, but they also have rights over you. Remember that you've taken them as your wives only under Allah's trust and with his permission. If they abide by your right, then to them belongs the right to be fed and clothed and to be kind to them. Do treat your woman well and be kind to them for they are your partners and committed helpers. And it is your right that they do not make friends with anyone whom you do not approve, as well as never be unchaste. O people, listen to me in earnest. Worship Allah, say your five daily prayers, your salah, fast during the month of Ramadan, and give your wealth and zakat, perform hajj if you can afford to. All of mankind is from Adam and Eve. An Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab. And a non-Arab has no superiority over an Arab. A white has no superiority over black, nor a black has any superiority over a white, except by their piety and good actions. Learn that every Muslim is a brother to every Muslim, and that the Muslims constitute one brotherhood. Nothing shall be legitimate to a Muslim which belongs to a fellow Muslim unless it was given freely and willingly. Do not therefore do injustice to yourselves. Remember, one day you will appear before Allah, and you will answer to your deeds. So beware, do not stray from the path of righteousness after I am gone. O people, 
O people, no prophet or apostle will come after me, and no new faith will be born. The reason is well, therefore. O people, understand the words which I convey to you. I leave behind me two things, the Quran and my example, the Sunnah. And if you follow these two things, you will never go astray. All those who listen to me shall pass on my words to others, and those to others again. And may the last ones understand my words better than those who listen to me directly. Be my witness, O Allah, that I have conveyed your message to your people. Okay, so the Prophet Sallallahu began with praising Allah Azza Almighty. He begins by praising and thanking Allah Subhanahu Taala, and then he addresses those who are in attendance. He always, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, always started with praising Allah Azza wa And Subhanallah, this is something for each and every one of us. We should always start with that as well, Inshallah Taala. So. Where does the speech go? The first point I want to kind of hit on was that the speech was universal, right? The Prophet ﷺ directed his speech to all of humankind. He used the term, O people, seven times. He used the terminology, O men, once. And in the farewell address, the Prophet ﷺ did not use the terminology, O Muslims, or O believers. The Prophet's intention was to address all people, regardless of their religion, color, or times his time or any time after him until the Day of Judgment. The Prophet's message was to every single person everywhere from every corner of the world. And so, Masha the Barakal, it's really important to know that you know the speech was very universal. And then the second point on Hiran was when he's talking about sharing the message. He says, O people, lend me an attentive ear, ear, for I know not whether after this year I shall ever be amongst you again. Therefore, listen to what I'm saying to you very carefully and take these words to those who could not be present here today. So at the beginning, right in the start, he's addressing the people, and he's telling them to pay close attention to what he's about to say, and he's asking them that they deliver this message to all of mankind, to be transported from one place to another place, from generation to generation that to come, inshallah. This mandate was laid on the shoulders of those who attended, the task was fulfilled by the Meccan tribe's propensity for commerce and travel. One of the main business of the Meccan people at this time, at the time of the Prophet was trade. And so the Muslim merchants traveled from land to land for business. And at the same time, they delivered the message of Islam as they were dealing with people in different corners of the world. So it's so important that you know we as Muslims be able to explain this message and not just keep it to ourselves because the Prophet wanted everyone to hear it. He, he didn't say it's only for one group of people and only help them, but let everyone be aware of it, let everyone know. And so the responsibility is on all of us to be able to explain who we are and explain what we stand for, inshallah. The next point I wanted to hit on was when the Prophet told us to be trustworthy. Be trustworthy. He said, oh people, just as you regard this month, the state, the city as sacred, so regard the life and the property of every Muslim as a sacred trust. Return the goods entrusted to you to their rightful owners. Hurt no one so that no one may hurt you. And remember that you will indeed meet your Lord, that he will indeed reckon your deeds. So the Prophet gave the examples of matters that people at gatherings knew very well. Everyone knew how sacred the month of Bilhija was. Everyone knew how sacred the day of Arafat was in the city of Mecca. So therefore, he wanted the life and the property of all the people to be sacred as well. So sanctity of life had been declared by Eliza on the Quran. People were to be protected and their lives preserved. People were to be dignified, respected, and honored. Their properties are to be protected and saved. The sanctity of life is to remain well preserved until the Day of Judgment. A reminder that everyone is fully accountable for their deeds. And that Allah will take every person into account. If everyone heeded to this fact alone, my dear sisters and brothers, if we all just thought about this fact alone, then subhanAllah, could you imagine how, what an amazing world this would be? And if we all just remembered to be trustworthy and kind and, you know, just do our best, subhanAllah, could you imagine what this world do, would be like? The next point that, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu hit on was do not deal with interest. That Allah has forbidden this for us. So the concept of economic exploitation is prohibited in Islam. You know, we can't take interest nor can we give it. And since usury is a form of economic monopoly and exploitation in a capitalistic system, 
what happens is usually the rich become richer, right? While the poor becomes poorer. So the Prophet ﷺ in his final last sermon abolished all types of economic exploitations. He said usury is prohibited and for people not to deal with it even if they've had an agreement or contract with someone prior to the introduction of Islam as his uncle um, Abdul, I mean Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib did. So he basically, the Prophet ﷺ said nobody is above the law and he mentioned his uncle, his own uncle's name is right there, right? And so he said it's so important that we all just abolish that and not, you know, be part of that system. And subhanAllah, it's living in the West, living in the U.S., a lot of people say, oh, you can't live without interest and it's so this and it's so that. And subhanAllah, I disagree. I think that one of the best things that I've done is when we walked away from interest and we have to deal with it. I mean, there's certain times when you can't do much about it, like when you're dealing with the IRS and you have to pay them. That's what they're doing. But again, that's not a, you're going. You're not buying a house or a car or student loans and all that on interest. And believe me, you could get around all of that, inshallah, should you really want to. It's just about hard work, effort, and how much you want to, subhanAllah, obey the message of um, Allah is our job. The message of, you know, the Prophet and the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's given us. Okay, so the next point I want to hit on is when the Prophet said, beware of shaitan. Beware of Satan. And he says, beware of Satan for the safety of your religion. He has lost all hope that he will ever be able to lead you astray in the big things. So beware of following him in the small things. So the Prophet tells us that Satan has lost hope in making people worship him. But he has not lost hope in diverting man from practicing the teachings of Islam. He will create animosity among the people. The Prophet states that Satan will attempt to divert our attention from the straight path set by Allah. And the Prophet warns all of us, he warns humanity from falling into this path. The next point I want to hit on is the rights of women. You know, the Prophet tells us that, you know, we as women, we have rights. And subhanAllah, a lot of times we were told that we don't have rights and that we're oppressed, especially being in the West. It's amazing how people think just because we're in hijab and abayas that we don't have any rights or we don't have a mind or we're not educated. But um, here the Prophet is reminding everyone that we have rights, you know, and that the brothers have taken uh, you know, the women as their wives only under Allah's trust and with his permission. And that, you know, we have the right to be fed and clothed and taken care of. And he reminds the brothers again to treat the women well and be kind to them. For they're your partners and they're your committed helpers. And it's your right that they do not make friends with anyone whom you do not approve. As well as never be enchased. And subhanAllah, so being modest is a big thing for us. You know, but treating the woman with kindness and gentleness and love. And of course, you know, the brothers have rights too. I mean, we as sisters, you know, sometimes we may have friends that are not appropriate or that are misguiding us or that are, you know, telling us the wrong stuff. And if our husbands do not want us to hang around them, you know, then subhanAllah, we should be able to listen to them. And subhanAllah, it's the same way, like sometimes we don't like some of the brothers our husbands hang around with and we let them know. And, you know, mashallah, the barakal, sometimes they listen, they're listening to us the same way. So, um, you know, if our, but we women sometimes we're notorious for being like, no, I want to, um, it's my friend, you can't tell me this, you can't tell me that, and we can't, and we're not able to see sometimes if these people are, you know, good for us or bad for us, and so if our husbands don't like some of our friends, I mean, then we should also be able to listen and listen to their point of view and understand why, and be able to respect that, you know, and be able to, um, because you know your spouse is someone that subhanAllah you you're gonna keep you're gonna be with till the end of your life inshallah you're gonna have kids with you're gonna move forward um, how our friends can come and go but spouses you know you wanna you wanna keep each other happy you know the sisters for the brothers and the brothers for the sisters and do our best to make each other happy so because we're we're lifetime partners inshallah right friends can come and go again but we don't want that to happen with our spouses you know. Um, so this is important to remember that family dynamic here, inshallah. And then the Prophet also tells us, follow the five pillars of Islam, right? He says, oh people, listen to me in earnest. 
worship Allah, say your five daily prayers, fast during the month of Ramadan, and give your wealth in zakat, perform hajj if you can afford to. So the Prophet asks us to listen to him in a serious mental state. The Prophet instructs all of humankind to worship and obey Allah and to follow the rules and regulations as mandated in the Quran and the Sunnah. And he keeps telling us the five foundation, basic foundation of the pillars for being a Muslim. Number one being witnessing there's no God except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his messenger and his final messenger. Number two, performing the five daily prayers. Number three, fasting in the month of Ramadan. Number four is giving, um, you know, two and a half percent or depending on, you know, what kind of wealth you have. Because um, this, this is a thick question, I don't want to go into details, but giving your zakat and also performing hajj to Mecca once in a lifetime if you're able to. You know, so this is so important. All of these are important points to hit on and to not forget them. But again, what we sometimes forget is this is just the foundation. This is our basic. Um, if we can do more, it's even better. But, you know, a lot of us are stuff for Allah. We can't even get to the five prayers properly. And that's important to remember that that's, that should just be the beginning of it for us, inshallah. And so, equality of mankind, right? Allah, um, the Prophet sallallahu tells us, that all of mankind is from Adam and Eve, and that an Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab, nor a non-Arab has any superiority over an Arab. Also, a white has no superiority over a black, nor a black over a white, except by piety and good action. So we have to learn that every Muslim is a brother to another Muslim. Same thing as every Muslim, you know, woman is a sister to another Muslim sister, right? And that we're one ummah, right? And that what belongs to, what is legitimate for one Muslim and belongs to our fellow, unless it's given freely and willingly, we don't just give it. So therefore, you know, if we were to take the property of uh, someone else, if we were to be in unjust to someone else, and if we were to do that stuff, at the end of the day, the Prophet is telling us, don't do injustice to yourselves. Because who is it really hurting? At the end of the day, it's really hurting us. You know, so... Um, it, you know, he really points out that there's equality amongst all of us, blacks, whites, Arabs, non-Arabs, Indians, Pakistanis, Afghans, whoever we are, you know. And he's reminding us, you know, to not steal, to not cheat, take what's been given to you, and that's it. You know, don't do not do things that, you know, it's, maybe there's a reason why Allah hasn't given it to you. And we have to remember that. And don't, if we decide to take something that doesn't belong to us, we're actually hurting only ourselves, astaghfirullah. And may Allah protect us and forgive us and may He not take us on that path. I mean, um, and then the brotherhood in Islam, you know, this is one of my favorite areas and I love about Islam is having the strong brotherhood and sisterhood, you know, um, it's, it's so vital to us because it really like, you know, when I see a sister or a brother, I'm always like, I'm like, oh, Allah. automatically I connect it because of the fact that we have that same Akidah. That same love for Allah, that same love for trying to do good and stay away from evil and all that, you know. Um, again, there's all Muslims like any other religion have different levels of faith, different levels of Iman, but still, subhanAllah, it's amazing, you know. Um, and the Prophet ﷺ here says, remember that one day you're going to appear before Allah and answer for your deeds. So be aware and do not stray from the path of righteousness after I'm gone. Uh, very important again to remember that you know, we will, there is a day of judgment. We believe in that, and we're all going to be standing in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. And you know, we have to answer for everything we've done. So we really have to think and reflect before we do some things. Is it worth it? What is our answer to Allah going to be? You know, and He prohibited for us. The Prophet Muhammad prohibited transgressions on every level. And with that said, He, you know, He explained that to us, and that. You know, Allah Azawajal hates that. He hates injustice. He hates transgression. And he urged us to stick to the righteous path at all times. Um, and then, you know, the ending was the seal, seal of the prophethood, right? Where the Prophet said, there's no one, no other prophet that's going to come after him. I mean, no new prophet that's going to come after him. Isa, alayhi salam, will be coming back. And, um, you know, but that's not a new faith. He came before the Prophet And it's so important to remember that there's going to be no other messengers except um, Isa that will come back before he's the one that's going to kill that 
Dajjal, but that's again, he's not a new prophet. He, you know, he's just going to be the one that ends it, inshallah. Um, and he's the Prophet told us he leaves us with two things the Quran and his way of life. And if you follow these two things, you will never go astray, inshallah. So he declared, you know, that it's vital to our success that we. That we stick to the Quran and to that hadith and to his life and follow that example if we want to be successful, inshallah. And then, of course, you know, he mandated all of us who are listening to pass this message on to everyone else and to let everyone else know and let them be aware of who we are and what we stand for. Especially in this day and age, subhanAllah, when there's so much evil out there and there's so many wrong groups and so many, you know, People doing the wrong stuff and misguiding people about Islam. We have to be out there and raising our voice and explaining the truth, you know. And lastly, you know, he made Allah his witness. He said, oh, Allah be my witness that I've conveyed your message to your people. Again, this is vital because, you know, he, his whole point of being here, his whole point of doing everything was to please Allah and he was a messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's important for him to remember. Um, Remind everyone that, you know, hey, I've, Allah is my witness. I came here, I've given the message, I've done my best. Now it's up to uh, the Ummah, inshallah, to pass it on. So, inshallah, I hope you've benefited from this lecture. It's really, I loved his last sermon, the Prophet and um, and I love his whole life, mashallah, but his last sermon really just puts an impact on what he wanted from all of us. And it's a, rem a great reminder for myself and for everyone else to think about these words and to reflect on them and to see are we doing our part in trying to be the best Muslims we can be staying away from interest trying to hold on to our t taking care of our families you know not cheating stealing hurting others you know and just a reflection on all this and seeing where we're at and how can we continuously change and become better inshallah so jazakallah khairan subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك وأتوب إليك ونتوب إليك. How perfect you are, O Allah, and we praise you. None has the right to be worshipped except you. We seek your forgiveness and turn in repentance to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa